you know, my name is Lotus Dawn and I will be your guide. I have a business blossom with Lotus, which is all about empowering people with the power of the stars. That connection. I saw her do the single most incredible thing I've ever seen done. She did the most amazing blessing Put your hands back your that was so appropriate for the world and so empowering and so appreciated. <laughs> this woman empowers everything she touches. She's found something inside of herself. And I do believe if she was focused on you and wanted you to heal. And I'll give you the opportunity to access places and spaces, locations and She's got power and knowledge and the ability to implement her knowledge. I want you to pay attention to her. It's something special. The energy went through us all. Lotus is really want to connect with her. This makes me feel like so grounded, mm -hmm. so calm and peaceful. Something inside of me. I feel change. I never thought that way before. Oh my God, she actually resembles the beauty of the lotus itself. You gave me a permission to connect with my soul. How many of you have been touched by her presence at this event? And I have a gift. A gift to share with you. So come, and I will be so excited to share all that I've learned so that I can hold your hand and bring you with me. And so in the future, I will have a book that is going to detail a lot of the information that I'm sharing with you. Astrology Secrets is kind of a, a beginning start for this book because the work we're about to go into today and reveal is truly powerful, truly transformational, and all of you really deserve to know about it. And I spent a lot of time getting certifications and working on my, my healing abilities. I have a BA in psychology. I am a certified hypnotherapist. I also do something called theta healing, which allows me to assist people in clearing and healing at the DNA level. But honestly, it was the work with my mom who grew up in the 60s and 70s and learned about an alternative form of astrology known as sidereal astrology that got me really hooked on learning about the stars and re realizing that I could use the stars location in my chart and in other people's charts to begin to reveal information that's just absolutely out of this world, mind-blowingly accurate. And so that's why I got into this work, but it wasn't until January of 2022 where I learned three main secrets. And that's what this work is going to share today. Um, one thing I learned was that every constellation is a different size. Okay. And I constellation that falls within this band is referred to as a zodiac constellation. At any given time, the sun is in a constellation of the zodiac. The sun lies between us on the earth and a certain pictures linked each of the 12 zodiac constellations to the month that the sun passes through. So in June, the sun sweeps through Cancer. And in July, it glides across Leo. That's Western astrology. But you see, there's a problem with that. Each constellation is of different sizes. Some are small, some are big. It takes the sun seven days to pass through Scorpius, the smallest zodiac constellation, and 44 days to clear Virgo, the largest. So you cannot divide the year into 12 equal pieces with 12 equally shaped constellations. A lot of people put a great deal of significance on their zodiac sign, their sun sign. But in reality, since the Earth is processing, the constellation in which the sun appears today is different from the constellation in which it appeared 2,000 years ago. So the next time someone tells you that you're competitive because you're a Scorpio, tell them, well, you know, today I'm really not a Scorpio anymore. From the infamous what's your sign line to predicting fortunes and defining personality traits, the 12 signs of the zodiac have played a substantial role in pop culture. But where do these signs come from? And who named the stars? We have original names for stars, in some cases that came to us from Mesopotamia. Some names were added to the stars by the Greeks and the Romans. Some of those survived, some of them did not. 
With the collapse of the Roman Empire in about 450 AD, much of this knowledge was lost. However, it was preserved by the Arabs. In fact, much of astronomy survives today because of the Arabic astronomers preserving and augmenting the calculations and work of the Greek and Roman astronomers. In 150 AD, Greek scientist Claudius Ptolemy merged his own observations with historical writings, labeling more than 1,000 stars. And out of all the constellations that cover our skies, we've learned that 12 are zodiac constellations. But in reality, there are 13. Even if we're not followers of astrology, most of us know what our astrological sign is. What most of us don't know is that instead of having 12 zodiac constellations, there are actually 13. Ophiuchus, which is Greek for the serpent bearer, is our forgotten sign. It has 55 visible stars and is home to Bernard's star, which is the fastest moving star through our night sky. Nestled between Scorpius and Sagittarius, Ophiuchus dwarfs the constellations it surrounds. Although it was one of the original 48 star patterns that Ptolemy cataloged, some scientists speculate that it might have been dropped as a zodiac sign to keep an even number of 12. Yes, so here we have from the History Channel, from NASA, this video recording of them saying there are actually 13 signs, which if you Google Ophiuchus and the 13th sign, you'll probably find, oh, it's not a sign, etc. So here we have out of the horse's mouth, as they say, yes, we do have a 13th sign and it is Ophiuchus, right? And we are all sort of here accepting that it's here and it exists. So now what, right? Delete. What do we do now? So now that we know Ophiuchus is here, <laughs> this is really interesting. So this is from NASA. I, I went online and I, I found where NASA released that we have a 13th sign Ophiuchus. And they say, but even according to the Babylonians' own ancient stories, there were 13 constellations in the zodiac. Now, they say that they chose to leave one off because 12 would fit really nicely in that circle. And so it would be easier to do the mathematics. However, as I'm going to share with you today, I think there might have been more to why they left the 13th sign out and why I'm so passionate and so excited and this is this picture is actually from NASA's website. So there they have Ophiuchus listed as the number of the 13th. So very interesting. So when you add, why would they leave the 13th sign out, right? And why would I want to do a new moon call on the day, the new moon of the Ophiuchus new moon to share this with you? I can't believe how powerful this is. I just, I'm literally like buzzing from head to toe to just get to be here and just to get to share this information with you. Why would they, Babylonians, remove the 13th sign from their constellations? Because if you look up at the sky and you look up the constellation of Ophiuchus, it's actually huge. It's not just like a little star cluster. It's like one of the biggest constellations. So it doesn't really make sense that you would leave it off, right? It just doesn't make sense. And so here are some theories or ideas and also explanations for what is Ophiuchus. So when you add one more sign to the, the 12 signs, you get 13. And there's some really in interesting synchronicity at play today, which I'm going to go into in just a moment. But 13 relates to the number of moons that actually occur per year. Okay, if you were to count the weeks differently, we would actually have 13 moons per year. And it would add up very nicely. There's a couple of posts on Facebook that explain this in greater depth. Another thing that happens is when you add the 13th sign, you get alignment to the fact that women have 13 menstrual cycles per year. And then this ties into the idea that the turtle, which has long been a representative or symbol of Mother Earth, especially in Native American traditions, they say that the turtle, you know, swims through the ocean of the galaxy and has the earth on her back. Well, the turtle has 13 humps on its back and then around the outside of the 13, it has 28 more humps. And it's just so powerful that when you add Ophiuchus back 
to the constellational system, you align the zodiac wheel to the natural rhythm of nature. And how perfect to be here on a new moon, connecting to the power of the 13th sign, connecting back to the, the true nature of who we are and to our connection to nature, right? Ancient Egyptians knew about Ophiuchus. They, they represented Ophiuchus as Imhotep, or even the god Thoth, Thoth, or connected to the energy of Ophiuchus. And so one of the energies of Ophiuchus that I really want to tap into is the power of manifestation. And in just a moment, I'm going to go really deep into why I say that Ophiuchus is the most powerful time of the year for manifestation. And I want you to write this down because there's actually a day coming up here really soon that is like the peak manifesting day of the entire year. And I'll share with you why. Um, right now, this new moon is a little bit like a doorway or an initiation forwards, which is really powerful. We're beginning a cycle. We're beginning an initiation cycle. And so you might be feeling things coming up you might be feeling your psychic abilities strengthening. That is because Ophiuchus relates to our connection to mastery, to sacred knowledge, to energy. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> wow. Okay, so today we are about to dive deep into the 13th sign. And if you want to take a screenshot of um, when you add a 13th sign, it changes all of the dates that the other signs are actually on. And so if you want to take a screenshot of what those new dates are for a 13 sign, for the 13 sign system, go ahead and do that. And why do, why do we do any of this? Why do we focus on manifestation? You know, what are we working to create? And Rumi, one of the great poets of all time, has a really great quote here that I'm sharing. Don't you know yet? It is your light that lights the world. Okay. And so really it is us choosing to light the fire of our personal purpose, our personal heartfelt desire that then lights the whole world. If you will, we can imagine lots of um, tapers or candles and that when we light our candle, we light the next candle and then the whole world will be illuminated. And so that is why it's so important to set our intentions and to align with the power of who we are so that then we can be that light to guide and support. Ophiuchus allows us to tap into the ancient storehouse of wisdom that's been hidden for thousands of years. So this is really powerful from the Bible. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge. Psalm 19. Okay, and so many people say the Bible and astrology don't get along, right? And we shouldn't do astrology. And that's been a battle, I think, that Ophiuchus has, has faced for many thousands of years, because I think Ophiuchus has carried the knowledge of the stars and the knowledge of the heavens and has based quite, um, received quite a lot of resistance from the mainstream around expressing their truth. 